The Canadian Grand Prix is just around the corner, and this weekend there is a lot to talk about. So today I'm going to do a bit of a different video to usual, and I'm going to be talking about 5 talking points for the Canadian Grand Prix. If you enjoyed the video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now let's get straight into the video. Number 1 is there now a title fight on the horizon? With victory in Monaco for Charles Leclerc and Ferrari, and with McLaren winning the Miami Grand Prix, and then taking Verstappen all the way to the end of the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix, is there now a championship fight brewing? Max Verstappen has been beaten in two of the last three races, and it looks like in Montreal he might not have it all his own way. Will this then open the door for Charles Leclerc or Lando Norris to get in the fight? Well, for me, I highly doubt it. I don't think Verstappen will be dominant this weekend, but at the next race in Spain, I fully expect we will see Red Bull and Verstappen back to the top, and potentially by some distance, as that circuit will suit their car perfectly. That being said, the competition is closing in, and Red Bull will not have it all their own way every single weekend like we saw last year. They now need to fight for wins, and for us the fans, it is great to see. Verstappen has already built up a decent lead in the Drivers' Championship, so that will definitely help him, and it will probably require Verstappen to DNF from one of his stronger races in order for Charles Leclerc or Lando Norris to find their way in position to fight for the Drivers' Championship. However, with Sergio Perez seemingly taking a dip in performance like we saw last year, then I do think that Red Bull could at least be under pressure for the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari massively closed the gap in Monaco, and I think in Canada, both McLaren and Ferrari will close the gap once again to Red Bull. Ferrari are now only 24 points behind in the Constructors' Championship. That might sound like a lot, but as we've seen, that gap can come down very quickly when it is 2 versus 1, and if Max Verstappen has only one hand tied behind his back because Sergio Perez isn't there, then we could at least see Ferrari create a fight in the team's championship. Number 2. How will Esteban Ocon and Jack Doohan perform? Esteban Ocon will now be leaving the Alpine team at the end of the season, as it seems like he was fully put to blame for the incident at the start of the Monaco Grand Prix with teammate Pierre Gasly. This incident ended any opportunity for Alpine to get two cars in the points at Monaco, which for them is crucial as they are finding points hard to come by this year. To make matters worse for Esteban Ocon, this weekend he will be replaced in FP1 by his potential replacement driver Jack Doohan. The Aussie will be taking part in FP1 and I'm sure that Alpine will be looking at things very closely to see if he is ready for a shot at F1 in 2025. As of now, Esteban Ocon is out of a seat and out of the sport. He does have a bit of a reputation for being a difficult teammate, as he has had multiple collisions with previous teammates such as Sergio Perez and Fernando Alonso, as well of course with current teammate Pierre Gasly. This doesn't look good for a driver, as teams don't really enjoy seeing their two drivers come together on track, and he now has a bit of a history for doing it. So he will be looking to keep his nose clean, because he is a driver that has been performing, especially for Alpine in the last couple of years. Let's not of course forget that he did win a race for them, and of course he scored a podium for them last season. Haas looks like it will be an option for him, as it looks like he could be replacing Kevin Magnussen for 2025, but he will need to show them that he can be trusted as a teammate, especially because Haas will likely be influenced by Ferrari as Oliver Behrman is one of their drivers and Oli Behrman looks like he's going to be a Haas driver in 2025. Number 3. Can Red Bull get over their struggles with the curbs and bumps? Red Bull have finally shown that they do have weaknesses. We saw this initially at the back end of last year, especially at Singapore, that Red Bull are incredible at using the floor to generate performance, however they require the car to be very close to the ground. When they do have to raise the right hand, performance seeps away more for them than the competition. At Miami, Imola and Monaco, we saw them struggle with the curves and bumps forcing them to raise the ride height. Montreal features some difficult curves, especially at the back end of the circuit, which they will need to traverse. 
Luckily, at least for them though, the circuit has been resurfaced, which should eliminate any bumps. If they struggle in these areas, then we could see that they are vulnerable against Ferrari and McLaren once again. Max Verstappen though will likely still be able to live with any issues thrown at him, which is what we've seen at previous races, which is why he is the world champion and why he has won as many races as he has. Even when the Red Bull is not at its best, he's still in the mix, fighting for those podiums and wins, which will be very crucial. Teammate Sergio Perez though does tend to struggle a little bit more, and if he is struggling again with the balance and with getting over the curbs this weekend, then we could see him being eliminated early from qualifying, like we saw last year at this same race. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video. Number 4, will Ferrari make it back to back victories? Charles Leclerc finally took victory at Monaco and Ferrari have now won more races this year than they did last year, which is progress at least. And going into Canada, it looks like they could be in a good position once again. Charles Leclerc is really starting to perform and extract everything from the car and I think they will be a good again this weekend. In my preview and predictions video, I did say that he will make it back to back victories and that would be great to see and that could be down to my Ferrari bias somewhat. But in all reality, I don't think it will be very easy for them because I anticipate that McLaren will be very strong. They showed that in Monaco they've overcame any issues in slow speed corners and at Imola, they also showed how good they are in the chicanes. This alone might mean that it is unlikely for back-to-back -back wins for Ferrari and Leclerc. Max Verstappen is also absolutely still in it, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins this race, despite the fact that the circuit is not a perfect fit for Verstappen and the mighty Red Bull team. So, do I think Leclerc and Ferrari will make it back-to-back -back wins? Honestly, I don't know if they will. I would love to see it, but I'm not sure they will do it. And number five, will the rain cause chaos? During my preview and predictions video, I based all of it on being dry. However, looking at the weather, it seems very likely that we are in for a wet weekend. All three days look like they will be weather affected, and so I anticipate that we will see a somewhat different running order from usual. Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton will be very happy if it is wet, because we did see them perform in China at the sprint qualifying when it was wet, just like we saw also with Lando Norris in the McLaren. For Alpine and Jack Doohan, if practice is wet, then it could be very much a trial by fire, and he will be looking to just keep the car out of the wall. If it is wet for every single session, then I've got to say I do feel very sorry for the fans, because it will be very likely that we see limited running due to the lack of wet and intermediate tyres that come to each race weekend, and also the teams don't want to risk damaging their cars unnecessarily. If it is wet, what do you guys think will happen? Also, what are your talking points for the Canadian Grand Prix? What do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, do be sure to let me know, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.